Hi, today I'm talking about setting up timing control on my Phytec fuel injected 1964 Mercury Monterey convertible. Now I have the 600 power adder kit which does come with timing control. At first I wasn't using the feature and then I had a lot of problems with the distributor. Now distributor factory on here would come with a resistor wire and that's the type of aftermarket distributor I had bought. It was a uh, Mallory Unilite and that requires a lower uh, lower voltage. The Phytech only wants 12 volts to the ignition or it gets interference and you're going to get the uh, RPM signal error. Even worse, uh, taking out the resistor to make the Phytech work, the distributor would start misfiring after about 20 minutes. It was just getting too hot with that uh, full 12 volts to it. So I finally went to timing control. I put in an MSD billet distributor and now I'm using that to adjust my timing. Now another uh, caveat here is at idle, with timing control, it can adjust your idle um, and maintain your idle by moving timing a little bit. So it's a little tricky to time it right at idle because um, I'm noticing on mine it's jumping from about 12 to 16 degrees with a target of 14, about two degrees either way. Uh, it just helps refine and um, even out the idle. Really nice feature. It actually has been working really well. My idle's improved uh, significantly. This is kind of an old tired 390. Uh, so it can use all the help uh, that it can get there. So I'm going to go through putting in the distributor, setting base timing, uh, verifying total timing, there's a deflection measurement in between there, and make sure that what the car is seeing, what it's actually firing at, is matching what the Phytech is sending. Uh, the other thing in the distributor, making sure that the rotor is right on the distributor terminal peg, as it's swinging by and at a range. So phasing the distributor and that required, which I think to do it right, to verify that it's right, a spare distributor cap with a three quarter inch hole drilled through it. So I am working on installing an MSD billet distributor that I can use to phase in the rotor and use timing control on my Phytech fuel injection. Now the first thing was just getting that thing in there. The interference fit to the oil pump drive shaft hole is really, really close. And I actually took a little bit of uh, sandpaper and had to sort of massage that down just enough to get that thing to drop in. And man, I, I haven't had one fit uh, quite that tight before. No dirty jokes here. So now that I have it in, um, what I wanted was for number one to be about right back here and see square peg round peg when I fit this in it's going to point right over there which is right where I wanted it so kind of got lucky on that what I did was uh, once I got it in crank the motor over with my finger in number one feel it pushing out all the air past my finger and then get the uh, timing marks I uh, put a little pink nail polish on the timing marks down there Let's see if we can oh there you can see them um, so the timing mark that it's on is 10 degrees, the other one is zero. Really helps them stick out in that uh, bright, bright pink I borrowed from my wife. Um, now that that is lined up, I'll take this uh, cap off the distributor again. Get my wife here. So with the cap off the distributor, uh, it's a lot easier to see that the uh, blue magnet lined up right with one of those paddles there so that's where it's going to fire it's facing number one it's going to fire on number one now i can put the cap on and give it an initial phasing that should get me close okay so i've drilled a hole in the cap and if you can see the edge of the rotor is lined up with the peg and as it advances basically that rotor is going to pull back to the other side of that number one peg so on my base um, setup, if I am timed right, we actually look like we're in pretty good shape. I'm using the third person again, it's just me. So you see how from one side to the other, that's fine. The spark will travel right off that corner, right to the post when the spark comes and that's just fine. It'll sweep through the rotor to the other corner at full advance if everything's working right. Again, once everything starts spinning, the alignment's not quite right. That's why we can watch this in real time. Is that thing spinning with that hole there? And see just how close it is. 
So here's how I ended up with it phased. It is rotated um, slightly clockwise to get the screw over here in the slot. And the reason for that is at idle, huh, you got the camera, not the distributor. At idle, it's firing off this corner and that's right at the peg. Now, as it advances, it happens earlier. And since this one rotates this way, this starts moving this way as you're looking at it um, with the timing light hitting it. So what that means is at about 20 degrees or 25 degrees, it's right in the middle. And at full advance, which I'm seeing 36, it's getting close to this edge. Now, when we add in vacuum advance, what we're not seeing, we're gonna hit all the way to this corner. So through the full sweep of timing, we go from the leading edge being at the peg to the far edge. And this is where I came up to get that full sweep. And that's our rotor phasing that you can see right through the cap, really cool. So I was running the engine, looking at what I was seeing on the timing light on the balancer compared to what I was seeing as an output on uh, the Phytech handheld. And it was only about two, three degrees off. So everything actually worked pretty well, stabbing it in and getting it running. Being within under five degrees is great. And then phasing the rotor just by turning it um, the two notches, like the Phytech instructions say, two of the long notches. So you, this one was right on. So everything, um, handheld matches the balancer, rotors in phase, and it runs pretty sweet. Now for checking deflection in the uh, VR4000 timing, what I've done here is made a mark at 36 degrees, which is my total timing, um, no load, without any vacuum. Uh, advance basically coming in. So that's at 36 degrees. Now I don't have a 36 degree mark on my balancer. So what I've done since I have 10, 20, and 30 is I've marked those on a piece of tape, measured the distance between them, which was 0.58 inches, measured on a uh, digital micrometer like this, and then divided uh, 0.58 by 10 times 6 to get uh, 0.35. So then I space this out to 0.35 and made a new mark. And that new mark is 6 degrees. Laid the tape back on the balancer to show, um, to line up with 0, 10, 20, and 30, and then made my mark at 36. Now with that, when I have it running, I'll be able to open the thing up to 4,000 RPM which should be at 36 degrees, and just make sure it's on. If it's off, then I need to make some adjustments to that VR4000 number. Because once everything starts spinning, it starts deflecting, it gets off a little bit, and this is a digital way to bring it back in line, make sure your timing's accurate. So here's that VR Advance 4000, and basically that's taking in for your deflection. And this was set at 17.1. I turned it back to 16.1 because I was getting uh, too much advance on the top end and that was a little too much right at this 16.5 which was just one click back from the factory setting when I open the thing up to 4,000 rpm um, looking at the controller it was giving me 36 degrees and the dampener was at 36 degrees so that all lined up when I backed it back off zero was where it was supposed to be 20 was right where it's supposed to be um, prior to setting the VR4000 uh, 20 was even coming in a little advanced, so it adjusts the whole curve for a scale of deflection. So that seems to be working pretty well. Now, my assessment on these Phytech units is that they work really well. I actually really like it. It starts up, drives really nice from cold, um, transitioning to idle, back off idle again has been really nice, but it didn't come out of the box that way, and it probably won't come out of the box that way unless you have a mild cam Vortec headed 350, which is basically what they tune and set these uh, things on from the box. Now, I know you make your initial adjustments, but it's not quite gonna be there. Uh, the other thing is the instructions are really, they don't make it sound like they're that specific or that uh, detailed, but you really do have to be specific with the instructions. A lot of people won't have power to the white wire while it's cranking. Uh, that was an issue I had right away. Uh, people won't go through all the steps for phasing the rotor 
and setting that VR advance, some things that are just sort of missing or not totally detailed in the instructions, I, I don't think the right way or with as much clarity as they really need. But once you have everything dialed in, if you really take some time on it, which if you know all this coming in, it really doesn't take that much time. It was really a learning curve to know what I needed to do to get it running. Um, obviously, IAC steps or IAC steps are one thing they talk about a lot in um, forums or discussions, and obviously you have to get those right. And um, one thing I don't see a whole lot is on an automatic car like this, you want to make sure that's done in park. You're setting the IAC between 3 and 10 with the minimum amount of load on the engine. So like this has an electric fan, electric fan off. Um, warmed up all the way to idle, make sure that the target target idle is somewhere near your idle set point. Um, so for like this one, I'm at 640 for an idle set point. And with as little load as the engine's going to see. Now the IAC is gonna come up when you put it in drive. It's gonna come up a little bit with the fans on. If you have air conditioning, that's going to bump the IAC up as it's bringing up that idle, but really you're setting the throttle blades to the engine's minimum load, and that will get your IAC between 3 and 10 uh, by setting those throttle blades.